Greetings. So in this video we're going to talk about area of a regular polygon given a radius. But before we get to the process, uh, just a quick review here. A regular polygon means that uh, you have a polygon which is a closed figure where all the angles are equal. So these angles are all have the same measure. We say that's equiangular. And then um, all the sides have to be the same length so it's also equilateral. Uh, a radius in this case, we're probably used to hearing it in terms of a circle and it would be that point in the middle that goes to the edge. Um, in a polygon that sort of changes a little bit you get to the point where you have a point in the center that goes in and bisects this angle. So it has to go into the angle for it to be considered a radius. Um, what we need to figure out uh, is the area and to do that we're going to use the area formula for a polygon and if you don't know uh, we're going to use area equals one-half apothem times perimeter. Now, if you don't get that, that makes no sense. Why would you use that formula? There's a video on that. It talk, I think it's entitled Area of a Polygon Given a Side and an Apothem. So go there. It'll explain how you get there and how you could also just use uh, triangles built from the center and then uh, find the area of one of them and multiply by how many there are. That's another way to do it. But I'm going to use this here. Uh, so with that said, I have this, I'm trying to build it up. So I'm going to need some sides if I'm going to ever get a perimeter. And I'm going to need an apothem. So I have to build those things using the radius. And we're going to use trigonometry to do that. Or we could use uh, special triangles, your choice. So with that being said, I'm going to do what I usually do in the very beginning of this type of problem and put the number of sides up here in the corner just in case I need it later. So from here, we're going to go and sort of look at the idea of, OK, what happens if I make that angle there. And it always shifts and I always hate that. I don't know why it does it. It just does. This is one of those things that happens. So let's see if I can slide this back over here. There we go. So now we get a clear picture of this being a right triangle. And that's important uh, in this sense for us uh, because we can use it to find the other parts that we need. Now a couple things that I should mention. This, uh, or just really one thing, when I find this side, it's only one half of the total side, so just be aware that that's the case. I'm actually going to pop out this triangle so it's easier to work with. So I've got this triangle here. Put the parts together. There we go. So I've got this and I've got the 11 here. Now there's a couple different things that I could do to get to the next step. I could either find the apothem if I'd like, so I could find A, or I could find the half a side length, so let's just call that X for right now. What I'll need to do is figure out one of these angles, and there's many ways to do that. Uh, I'm going to go from, in the beginning anyway, I'm going to go from the idea of what happens if I look at this sort of setup as a circle. So each one of these parts, so like from here to here, uh, would break it up, each side would break that 360 degrees of that circle into six equal parts. So each one of these would be 60 degrees. And I can use that fact, and let me click back out and make it look back to normal here. So now I know that this angle here would be 60 degrees. But this is half of it, it's bisecting, so this becomes 30 degrees. Now I have some options. And I'm going to change this little a, make it look a little bit more like a small a as opposed to a 9. Um, now I've got some options that I can use. Uh, I can use the fact that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's helpful. I could use the fact that uh, I could use trigonometry if I wanted. For instance, if I wanted to use uh, sine here. Sine of 30 degrees because I have the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then I could just solve it. But what I'm going to do instead is use the special triangles idea. Now when I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and you're about to see why I usually use this to draw triangles, it's because I'm terrible at drawing them. If this is 30 degrees if this is 60, if this is 90, uh, this side is considered to be x, the side opposite 30 degrees. The hypotenuse in this type of triangle is actually twice the size of the smaller one. And then the 60 degree would be the smaller one times the square root of 3. So 
that's useful here. So if I wanted to find x, I could say, okay, well, 11 is my 2x version, so 2x is equal to 11. I could easily find my x, no problem. Just divide by 2. And it ends up giving me 5.5. And, and you could say 5.5 .5 if you want. You could say 5.5, whatever you want to do. So there's my uh, x value, which in this case would be this part right here. So 5.5, .5, which means my side length would be 5.5 .5 and 5.5, .5, which I hope is 11. If I did this, you know, that would be ridiculous if I didn't. So my side length is equal to 11. I'm going to go through and do some erasing here to make it look a little bit nicer. Now, with my side length being 11, it's easy for, my, for me to find my perimeter because I have six sides that are 11 each, so that would be 11 times 11, or 66. So I'm going to drop the bottom out of this one and say my perimeter value is 66. All I need now is my apothem, and that should be easy to find. And there's a couple of different ways I can do it. If I wanted to change this into 5.5 or whatever, I could do that, because remember that's what this value is here. Now I have a 90 degree, a right triangle really, and uh, I could just do Pythagorean theorem if that was my goal in life. It's not, but it could be. So I could just do a squared plus 5.5 squared equals 11 squared and then solve for a. That's okay, I could do that. But what I'm going to do is use the 30, 60, 90 triangle idea. And I said before that this x uh, was across from 30 and 60 was x times square root of 3. So I could just say, okay, it's really 5.5 times the square root of 3. That's okay, I'm allowed to do that. It's ugly, but okay, you might want to do 5.5 .5 times square root of 3. Depending on your visual preference, now for me, this point is going to go up here, but I'm going to actually work it out really quickly, just because I feel like working it out, I don't know. Seems silly to make something so ugly sit there in the middle of a problem. So 5.5, .5, and you might want to hit the times, so you know, you don't necessarily have to. So 9.5. Six, uh, two, six, two, seven. I'm going to leave it in that form for right now because I'm trying to get a reasonably accurate answer. So it would be that times 66 times 1 half or 0.5 or whatever you want. And it gives me a final area of 314.4. That's the ugliest attempt to make up for a mistake that ever existed. So feel good if you've ever made that kind of mistake and it was ugly. It's hard to beat that awfulness. So there's that. So there's that. Check the answer. Looks good. Um, see if there's one more that I'd like to. I'd like to have one that has sort of a triangle in it. There we go. It's a little bit of a sort of a horse of a different color in a way. Let me get rid of these objects. I don't want to get rid of the there we go. So I'm given a radius again, and there's you know ways that you could deal with this. You should note that right now this is not giving me a 90 degree angle, so it's not like I can do one half base times height. I would have to find the entire distance here. So continue that forward. So uh, what we're going to deal with instead is just to create the uh, the triangle like we did before. You may say to yourself at this point, well if we have that, why wouldn't we just do that? Because I can't get a side any other way. So I'm going to do what I did before and sort of extend out that triangle and know that uh, these parts are where they need to be. So what I'm going to do from here is make my triangle to work with. So I've got this going on this sort of thing and this. All right. Now, with that being said, there's a you can get some you can get these angles in different ways if you want. The easiest thing for me is this has all of the feels of a um equilateral triangle, 
there should be 180 and there's three of them. It's regular, so it's equilateral triangle, which means each one of these is 60 degrees because 180 divided by 3 is 60. This splits it in half, it bisects it, so that means that this angle is 30 degrees. So now I have all the stuff that I need because there's my 60 and there's this, my right angle. And remember, we're going to use the 30, 60, 90 triangle thing again. So this would be 14 times square root of 3 over 3. So this would be half of that. So I'm just going to take 14 divided by 2. So it's 7 square root of 3 divided by 3. And now for this part, I'm going to take this and multiply it times the square root of 3. So just like this. And the beauty of the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is that they sort of eliminate the square root by being squared because it's this, the term times itself, which is what squaring is, or, you know, exponent of 2. And you get this 3 here, so it becomes 7 times 3. You still have the divide by 3 part there. So 21 divided by 3 gives you 7. So this side is 7. Now, I'm ready to work. I've got most of the stuff that I need. First off, I need to go back and make my doesn't matter a ton because it's a triangle, but I will put the three there. Go back to my formula here. Now to find perimeter, I need to find the distance all the way around, and I know now that this part is seven. This uh, half of them here breaks it into two parts, so this is also seven, so that means my total side is fourteen. There's 14 here. There's 14 here. Or I can multiply 14 times 3, because that's why the 3 is up there in the first place, for issues like that. And it gives me 42 as my perimeter. My apothem is that not really exciting 7 over the square root of 3, or 7 times the square root of 3 over 3. And then I'm just going to sort of work that all in together. See if I can get the calculator to pop up. So maybe I want to do a fraction, so I'll hit alpha y equals and make the fraction. I'll do it again for the other one. And then multiply it by 42. and I end up with this, which I will write in as 84.9. Check my answer. And it would be super helpful if you could actually see it. There it is. So you end up with that answer. But that's it, uh, finding the area of a regular polygon when given a radius.